This is Bill DeMott, a.k.a. <laughs> Hugh Morris. You're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com. Crystal. Hey, Jack and Luke. How's it going? Don't forget the intro. doing great. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, quick question for you, Luke, is uh, what was your favorite moment of Tough Enough itself? That's a good question. Um, one of the coolest things, The Rock was the guy that got me into it. It was The Rock and Mankind Storyline that hooked me on wrestling when I was, I was 15. And uh, that moment that he walked through those doors, because I never expected him to be on the show, that was one of my favorite moments. The other thing, undoubtedly, was uh, was getting in there with, with Steve, because uh, to me, what that meant to me was that he saw a certain star quality beyond just like, oh, he's a good wrestler. Because um, Martin's a fantastic wrestler. He could have picked him. AJ is a great wrestler. They're good technical wrestling guys. But I felt like Steve saw a little extra superstar quality in me, and that's why he chose me that day. And uh, that was just absolutely uh, the coolest moment in the world. One of the things you didn't see, you know, and they have to cut down everything, but uh, he got he stumped a mud hole in me in the corner, and I was like, he goes, he's giving me, he's kicking me, and he goes, Go go down. It's like I know you're. I know the drill, Steve. You don't tell me twice. You know I've watched you since I was a kid. So like that was just wild. Uh, he brings it hard. He hits hard. He's intense in that ring. It's awesome. And uh, lastly, I'd say that moment during the final skills competition uh, when we're doing the bag drill, and I ripped off my shirt, went to the top drill, top rope, and dropped a long distance elbow in that bag. And I was like, that's the moment where I knew I had it. Uh, mm-hmm. where I knew I wouldn't be going home that day anyway. And to me, uh, that was a, a, a real, um, you know, iconic moment for me on the show. Mm-hmm. You said, uh, you know, being there, like, lit, lit a fire under you. What was it like uh, going out there in the live Raw? I and mean, you got Austin in the ring, you got you got uh, Vince McMahon in the ring, and just, you know, the, the whole crowd there. I was nervous up until the point I walked out, which mm-hmm. was the odd part. And it, it kind of mirrored, again, the Tough Enough experience where I was like, I don't know if you remember the la- well, you know, the second to last episode, and I said I had an odd calm about me right now. Well, when I got out there and heard that reaction that I wanted, uh, in my personal life, again, I, I'm anybody who doesn't know me hates me. They've ne- people who have never met me hate me, and I, I take a sick pleasure in that because to me that's like what a celebrity is. You have people talking about you that don't even know you. Uh, so it was that same type of sick pleasure I got when I walked out and hear the whole chorus of booze start. Uh, again, I just tweeted today. I just got Twitter the other day, by the way, Luke Robinson 13 official. And, uh, my last tweet today was my new guilty pleasure is hearing from girlfriends who had to watch tough enough Tuesday mornings on YouTube at work because their boyfriends <laughs> wouldn't let them watch it Monday night. And, uh, it's that same type of, uh, again, it's almost the sickness you could call it, but I love hearing those booze and I, they actually calm me down. And, uh, I don't think there's any question when Steve was, was grilling us and Vince, grilled us on uh, Raw that I was the one who looked more composed and calm and had the right things to say. Mm-hmm. Actually, uh, they just kind of stopped Andy right away when he started uh, his promo, yeah. and he's like, yeah. Garen Dam T, and he's like, did you say Garen Dam T? And he's coming right <laughs> out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. uh, Ange, man, do you have a question from the board? Yeah, I had a question of my own, actually. I was just wondering, do you keep in touch with uh, Jeremiah? Yeah, we're real close. He'll be a lifelong friend. Uh, we just got to spend the week together this past week and kind of, you know, uh, yeah, man, he's he's the best. And, and, and you kind of got to see uh, on that last episode where I grew up on the river, and that's why nobody understood it during the show. They're like, because of the visually the disparity between us, like I look like a pretty boy and he looks like a good old southern boy. And uh, But we grew up the same. We both grew up on farms. We both were raised, you know, tough and uh uh, we did a ton of fishing this week, slayed some smallmouth from the Androscoggin River up here in Maine. And, uh, yeah, a lifelong friend. Uh, I gotta put you, got to put you on the spot here a little bit. What did you think about the crazy elbow? The elbow drop the that he did. The twisting one? Yeah. Oh, man, you know what? I wish they, there's, there's a lot of stuff I wish you guys could have seen that they, you know, again, they, we have 300 hours of footage per episode that needs to get packed into an hour-long show. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was one night everybody was out of the rooms and we were goofing off, dropping elbows from, from like little kids onto everybody else's beds. <laughs> <laughs> I think we broke everybody's bed. They were like tilted down. If you're like, what's the, what happened to our beds? 
well, he goes, Luke, you ever, you ever seen this before, you know? And, uh, so I was the only one who actually knew about it. That was, that was a calculated move by him. Like, he looked over at me in the top rope, and I go, that son of a gun is about to do it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I thought it was wild. I thought that that was his shining moment, and if there was anything that was going to put him through to that uh, top two, that should have been it. Because, again, I said it time and time again, this is entertainment business, and Tough Enough was about, was about taking risks and showing that you're a superstar. It wasn't necessarily a wrestling competition. It's about finding that superstar. And uh, to me, he's in that same level. Mm -hmm. Let's see. we got a couple people calling in from England. Uh, Nikhil. Um. Hi, Luke. I just wanted to ask you, um, before Raw went live, would they tell you that you'd be in the first segment? Um, what did it feel like to be in the first segment of WWE Raw with Vince McMahon and Stone Cold Steve Austin? Yeah, I can't quite hear, but I think I got your question. Yeah, we knew that we'd be um, in that first... They, you know, they told us that Tough Enough would bleed into the opening of Raw and everything. Um, you know, and then just be prepared for whatever happens next. Um, and also, when you kind of found out that you lost and you went backstage, um, did anyone come up to you and kind of give you advice or, you know, kind of uh, tell, I'll tell you? I'll tell you that as soon as I walked backstage, Brooklyn Brawler, who's an agent now, he said, do not worry, kid. I see money written all over you. You will be a top heel in this business one day soon. And uh, that was the coolest thing that I had heard. And, uh, again, Steve Austin is a wonderful wonderful guy i don't have anything bad to say about him or about the decision it is what it is uh he was always been so sweet to me he believes in me and uh like i said i, I truly believe that he sees some of that same swagger and, and self-belief call it arrogance call it cockiness call it what you want that uh that he knows that he had to get where he is and um the biggest compliment that he ever gave me was he was right backstage after raw and he said you remind your attitude reminds me of a young Shawn Michaels. He had that same type of head swagger and belief that he was going to be a huge star. And I said, that's the greatest compliment I've ever gotten. And Stone Cold said, you're damn right it is. <laughs> and uh, so that was the that was the reaction backstage. The mayor also was very sweet to me. Another cool guy. He said, ah, I was expecting you to win. I said, likewise, bud. <laughs> and uh, he said, you know, about his tough enough experience too. I was just ribbing him a little bit. And uh, he said, look. I came in second place, and I'm the first person to, to win the championship, the WWE championship, and mm -hmm. and uh, shook my hand. So, you know, I think uh, I don't think there's any doubt people know who the real superstar is and who the real future of this business is. Yeah, I was going to say I was actually very disappointed. And uh, just one more question: um, Did you get to keep the WWE title, the replica they gave you? No, I think the, I think the winner might have got to keep that belt, but. Again, I don't. Oh. To me, this isn't about this isn't about championships. It's about entertaining people, yeah. and uh, you know, rightfully, I know, I, and the response that I hear from the fans, I think they know who the real, you know, who the real superstar is, and I don't need a belt to tell me that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people in the chat room bring this up, and they want me to ask you: uh, Did you know ahead of time that Andy had a uh, developmental deal with uh, WWE at one point before Tough Enough? Yeah, that got that got leaked uh, early, uh, the first episode when we were at backstage at SmackDown. Mm -hmm. Um. Again, I don't want to. Here's the thing. I don't want to. Um. You know, I'm not going to throw around conspiracy theories yeah. or anything. But, uh, I did know that it is a little odd that they. It, you know, it almost seems like it was a big infomercial for the developmental system. Ultimate. You know, when it came down to it, but. Uh. Yeah. You know, obviously, it's a little odd that the, you know that story already was, and that's where. You know, why would they choose to do that? Again, I don't want to get into it. I don't have any conspiracy theories. I don't have anything bad to say about the WWE. Uh, mm -hmm. I, we did know, um, and, and, you know, got, I didn't know when I had first met her, but that, uh, that uh, what's her name? Christina is Alicia Fox's sister. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I tried not to read into it at all when I was on the show. And, I, I'm, you know, a lot of people are throwing out, you know, conspiracy theories now. I don't, I'm not going to get into that, you know. My experience was, was life changing on the show, and, and whether that had any influence or not, who knows. Mm -hmm. Are you glad you didn't get the nickname uh, Skid Marks? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, uh, there's an expression that says, it doesn't, it's not what people call you, it's what you answer to. <laughs> and right. uh, 
that was his problem is that he answered the skin marks, you know, yeah. and, uh, and that's a, that's demonstrative of his character that, and that's what I tried to pull out of him on that one episode where I said, Hey man, it's okay to, to, to be a, a jerk every once in a while, you know? And, uh, or they're just to believe in yourself. Don't let someone call you that, and, and if mm-hmm. you let people call you that, then hey, that's what you're going to be known as. I actually saw he's taking a he's doing some indie shows, and they actually have on the uh, the poster skid marks. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, I don't know if it's ever that's just who he is. He, you know, he's a pretty passive guy sometimes, and and uh, you know, I people ask, well, why did you do that? Why would you help someone else? And I two things: one, I'm not uh, I'm not as much of a jerk all the time as people may think uh and secondly i never felt threatened by anybody else mm-hmm. um a lot of those guys came into it going well i never expected to win the competition I, you know i am the exact opposite i could play i played hockey in uh, in high school and uh i could play the bruins right now and like i'm gonna go into it believing i'm gonna win even if i get my ass handed to me Mm-hmm. It's just the way my attitude is. And Jeremiah is the other guy on the show. That that's why I always said he was my biggest competition, because we have that same like healthy sickness, that full mentality. Where it's like we will do anything uh, to win, and we're always going to believe in ourselves. Mm-hmm. Now there was one part uh, I think on the beginning of the show when they're saying like uh, previously on Tough Enough, and uh, uh, I don't know who said it, but they said like uh, you were uh, jealous of Martin. Uh, did you hear that on TV? Yeah, I heard that. Uh, well, what did you think about that? I thought it was absurd. <laughs> uh, another guy that I that I like, but um, and again, like again, all these relationships have kind of grown after the show. Where it's like ultimately they they knew who the real deal was and they knew who the alpha was, and they've all kept in touch with me. As like even for advice and everything. Hey, what should I be getting paid on this indie show? You're the first person I thought to call. Things like that. And uh, as far as jealousy in the ring, I came right out and said. Martin, you're a better technical wrestler than me. That particular challenge where I was livid, mm-hmm. he got blown up big time. He was gassed, and he was, like, leaning on me when I had him in a headlock. I was, like, lifting him up. And they cut out a part where he goes to leapfrog me and couldn't get off the ground. And that's when I shot a pin on him, and they go, oh, he's being selfish. That's what I was taught by Tony Atlas. If something goes wrong in the ring, you have to, you have to act like it happened. Mm-hmm. After the, you know what I mean? Like that happened. He fell over. I shot a pin. I'm trying to win the win the the match. Well, uh, there was no jealousy towards Martin. I was just kind of disgusted with the the logic of the trainers at that moment. And again, I don't. I'm not trying to. Put any, I I love Steve. The trainers. You know, it's it's ultimately uh, a TV show, and uh, you know there are times they might amp up some insults or amp up some of the, the dramatics to create more tension. And, uh, again, I stand by everything. I will say this about the show. Everything that you saw was very accurate to to what was the reality of the show. In other words... Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't edit it around to make it look... Uh... Yeah, no, they did, they did a really wonderful job. And, like, what I said, I said, I feel like I'm getting graded on a curve. I feel like I did, you know... I, I meant all those things, and I, I believe all those things, but ultimately, you know, there are times, you know, they might be testing you to find out how you react, and, and also because it's going to be good for TV. They're trying to light fires, you know? Mm-hmm. This is Tumbleweed from Tough Enough, A.J. Kirsch, and you're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com.